And three, two, one, boom. And we're back in another episode of Crack Gamers. This episode brought to you by Zenro Clothing Co. Pick up your tees and or accessories at zenroclothingco.com or check out the free playlist on Spotify, Zenro Radio. Use SG Podcast at checkout for 20% off select items. Okay, weird time. Weird time we are in. Um, marketing. I, I wouldn't say it's marketing, but like I think what yeah. we're seeing now is a huge push towards um, media controlling the masses. You know, like we like we have a huge herd mentality going on. Well, well, would you say that? Because because now that I say that, I'm like thinking back to before the internet and it's like well we kind of did have that thing with like local news like any, yeah i was any... gonna say yeah oh what, what were you gonna say about lo- local yeah news? i i don't think it's just a new thing it's 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 always been a thing yeah 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 totally totally so like it's it's weird to think now it, it's just more in your face now with when you have more outlets for media uh you have a lot of different diverging opinions you know what I'm saying? So like, so like you watch, you know, TYT or like RT or CNN, you know, Fox News, and then they'll all be saying different things. So it's kind of like, I mean, Hassan Minaj had a whole episode about this, like, where do you turn to for news? And he was saying that like local news is where a lot of these stories break. And then like major news or organizations, that's when they take over. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, like a, a yeah. local news story is actually who brought the whole Harvey Weinstein thing to light and then cnn picked it up you know mm-hmm. but it, it's weird because like now that we have like all these different avenues for information and like an unwillingness to put in the work to to review that information you kind of get into this whole echo chamber idea yeah well yeah what also like What's also included in when you say media is social media also, right? Yeah, so actually, that's what I was thinking about, yeah. And social media isn't the same media necessarily as, like, the news, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. I and, see that. That's a good point. And, yeah, and what happens when with the social media is it seems to be, like, you would, because it's from people, you tend to trust it versus an organization or a corporation. Right, because it's like it's like um, it's like it feels more word, word of mouth. Yeah, it's it's a it's like that. And word of mouth is always the best seller, but at the same time, it's like, but you have to realize that even your word of mouth came from a news media source because like, it's like they didn't just find this out and put it on social media. It's like it would have yeah. they would have heard it from somewhere and then continued that on social media, you know? Yeah, but yeah. but I feel like. I feel like what's important to realize is like that you should do your due diligence in looking into things before mm-hmm. having a concrete opinion on something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, because mm-hmm. I was thinking like, okay, I'm I'm guilty of it too. Like, I'll post something and then you'll be like, oh, that's that's not actually factual, you know? Mm-hmm. And and like, I think like. If I was if I was ride or dying this specific opinion, then it's like I would look more into it. But if it's just like I heard somebody say something and I repost it, it's I don't really care enough. I was like, oh, that's a cool idea. Like somebody else looking into it. Like, you know, they're doing this now. You know, right? But like, like I think for the things that, like I would say for the things I care about, like I I look into them, but. It, it seems like a lot of people will like ride or die an idea that they haven't fully looked into. Yeah. Yeah. Fully explored. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, like for, like for example, like flat earth. Right. And then, um, and then for that, it's like, okay, the, the earth's flat. And then you can get into an echo chamber because a lot of people will think the same thing. Like, you know, you have these pockets of like ideas that are floating, but, mm-hmm. yeah. but like, but we're so like structured in a way or not structured. We're so like staunch in our belief systems are very fickle belief systems, but like 
you know, we'll like take these to the grave kind of thing. Even though we're fickle about them, because like it'll it'll change with like the the tide. It's like there's no free there's no real free thought. You know, like people champion free thought, but it's like in order to to have like a free thought idea, you have to like look at both sides of the situation and then make your opinion, your judgment. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I feel like um, I feel like if if you're looking at you know, social media and like the way things are going, it's like, that's where we're at in society right now. It's like, you have a lot of loud voices, but a lot of like uneducated loud voices, you know? Yeah. 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 I'm like, I'm reminded by, um, I'm reminded of the, like, like for example, the defund the police thing right now. And it's like, but what does that entail? You know? Yeah. It is a catchy slogan, but what does that mean? Right. And, I think that's what needs to be more, uh, uh, like, uh, like the understanding of what it actually means. Because yeah. some people, because it, it, some people would say abolish the police. That's uh, what that means. Okay, okay. So, so I brought this up like primarily mm-hmm. because like somebody I know was like, oh, I'm I'm going to this like webinar on defund the police, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, what's what's the what's their stance and then it's like oh i don't actually know but i think it's um taking money away from like that sector and pushing it to other sectors i'm like oh that that makes sense you know but like what what is the funded police perspective and they're like oh i also don't know that one but i would assume it's just like we need to protect toronto and i was like yeah you do (laughs) though so it's like so to go fully towards like abolish or defund it's like, but what are the ramifications of that decision? Yeah. You know? It, yeah, and I... And it was like, all over my news feed today. Like, so I was just, like, on, and then, like, it was just, like, it was, like, abol- I saw abolish the police, and I was like, well, that's not smart. Like, you still need them, but, yeah. Right. Yeah, so, like, there's so many messages that's now connected with defend, uh, defund the police, and... Mm-hmm. In, in many in some areas we do need the police right like if uh, things happen within um like you get robbed or you need to report something like you yeah. do need the police for that and um i would say that i think the slogan should be more about like reform the police and uh that's how you can create uh change and hopefully that's more of a systemic change within that right yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. And it's like, at least if you reform it, you're not abolishing, you're not like totally doing away with it. You're like taking what's great about it and making it better, you know? Cause like yeah, that's, yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Like 100%, like, like not everything about the police is bad. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. Right. There are some things that are, that are bad. So those are the things that need to be reformed, right? Like, like the, the thing I'm thinking of is like, um, so there's two incidences that happened uh, semi recently, like one was the guy in downtown Toronto with like the knife and he was like going around mm-hmm. and like, and then like 12 cop cars were trying to like stop him. And right. it's like, well, if you defunded the police or you abolish the police, what, what are you gonna do with that guy? You, yeah, no, but, but even, yeah, like there, there are other like rare instances. Like, yeah, that is one instance. Like that is probably happens more often Then mm-hmm. there are the rare instances that happen near our area there with the van attack. And you would need the cops. For- I, I was about to say, like, there was another, the other story is, like, uh, in, in Brampton, this guy was going, like, 130 on, like, a, like, a, like, a um, suburb road or something like that. And then, like, he, he, like, hit some family and they died now, you know? And it's like, well, <laughs> you need the police there. Like, you should have stopped him, you know? You know? And, and what, what's kind of ridiculous, too, is if you fully abolish the police, like, let's say they're gone, right? And then my question is, what are you going to do with those people? that you need to police they're like okay well we're going to create our own our own system so it's like so you're essentially bringing back the police you know what i mean it's like you want to abolish the police but you're going to need them so you're going to band together and create your own like factions of like mm, Mm -hmm. right yeah you're going to create your own policing system naturally right Mm -hmm. so it's like it it's like if you're you're arguing to abolish something that you're going to eventually bring back because you need it anyways. So I agree with you. It's like reform it, don't abolish yeah. it. 
Yeah, exactly. I I, I think the the the, the defund the police has a lot of uh, mixed messages. Like, so, yeah, exactly. Some are saying that about like um, putting resources somewhere else to focus on more on community health and things, which would reduce crime. I agree. But then there's other people connecting that with abolish. So it's very confusing when the phrase itself says defund the police, when I think the phrase exactly should have been just reform the police. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And then, but then like you, but, you, but uh, 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 sorry, sorry, like, but the, like, the, but this is the thing, right? The reason why these things get cat, like it, it's meant to be a catchy phrase that then gets spread across the, the social medias. And that's what becomes uh, like stuck in people's minds. Right. It's totally. Totally. And, Again, this goes back to being the issues with social media, I would say. Yeah, and I wonder if, like, so, mm -hmm. so, okay, so so with, like, news outlets, so, like, you can't deny that social media is a news outlet. There are certain, like, pages that are, that are like, they spread news, right? Like, even if it's, like, six buzz, right? They're spreading some sort of news. Um, and I was thinking that, any form of news shouldn't be monetized. Like, like it should be mm -hmm. some sort of like, I mean, like, all, like, cause if you, if you go the government route through, like, it's like government funded, then it's like, okay, well, what are they canceling out? Because whoever funds these things has to, you know, abide by the, the laws set out from the funder, you know, whether yeah. explicit or implicit, you know? Yeah. And like, I, I just don't know the, the workaround for it, but I feel like it shouldn't be for profit because then you could just spin anything. You know, if you're selling ads, it's like, yeah, I'll just put the most ridiculous thing out there to like get more clicks, even mm -hmm. though it's disinformation, you know? I, yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I mean, they're in, in a way they're competing with social media too, right? Um, but, but what I'm saying is even these social yeah. media channels should be considered news outlets, you know, like if you're spreading news, it should be like non, um, like it should be impartial, I guess. Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like it, yeah. it, it shouldn't have any influence from an external party. Yeah. But it's difficult to, I don't know how you could regulate that. Right. Like for instance, uh, like Fox News, for instance, was created just for the conservative news. Right, ex exactly, exactly. A voice yeah. for them, for, for, create a voice for the conservative just to show, like, that throws, like, um, other news, like, questions other par parts of the news, questions the story of, maybe that's a factual story, but they're putting it out there to help conservatives, right? Right, 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 right. It, like, the framing, you know? Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like a false story, but that's the way they're framing it makes it seem, you know, plausible or it, it creates confusion in a way too when and, you when you do that. And and that's the other thing too. If you put out a story and it's not vetted properly and then you put out a retraction, nobody's going to read the retraction or remember the retraction, you know. We're yeah. just going to oh, yeah. we're just going to like hear about it and then keep passing it on as if it's real, you know. So I feel like mm -hmm. there should be like it, it's sort of like for me I think like this falls under the category of those 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 like um industries that are super important like teaching it should be very difficult to be a teacher i think you know because like you need to you need to like know something to a certain level enough yeah. to like like teachers should be like exemplars mm -hmm. you know yeah what i'm saying cuz like like you're you're influencing young, a young mind you know mhm mm mhm mm I'm talking about like grade yeah. school teachers, you know. Yeah, I agree. I mean, those are the ones who are the full, first influences to the kids, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if you and if you if it's super easy to get like an education to like teach children, like like an ECE, let's say, not knocking people with ECE, but it's just like if it if it's super easy to get in there, but you don't realize that you're you're meddling with a kid's formative years, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. like, all right. So, so for example, like, um, I think I've, I've told the story before, but like in terms of formative years, when we were younger and then learning about hell and then me asking like, what's hell like? And then the person was like, oh, 
just imagine pure darkness and you're being burned for all of eternity. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, whoa, that's super intense. But like, that's like a formative year thing. And then it scared me even today, you know, like if I watch like a devil movie, I'm like freaked out, even though I know it's not real, you know? Right. But like, right. again, formative years. So, you know, you can't take mm-hmm. those things lightly is what I'm saying. Like that, that's an industry that shouldn't be taken lightly. Just like news, just like police. It's like these things should be, heavily regulated you know so, yeah basically what you're you're saying is like the public jobs the jobs that are there for the um oh i guess yeah, yeah. I, I didn't even think about that yeah, yeah totally yeah public jobs yeah, yeah. that yeah. they need to be uh taken exactly yeah I, I agree with you on that like like for, uh, for for example like so like being a black belt right when before it got all weird but when when we were coming up as black belts like there was a code of ethics like you had to follow and like there's a there's an idea that gets ingrained into your mind and if you don't if you don't demonstrate these ideals then you aren't worthy of that accreditation you know so Mm -hmm. why is it why is it more difficult to get a black belt than it is to like get in a two-year teaching certificate and then start shaping young minds you know what i'm saying Mm-hmm. That's weird. Right. It's weird to me. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, there, that would mean that we would need to reform everything in some way, right? Um, we would have to really scrutinize and uh, uh, like go through uh, whatever public systems or public um, jobs and uh, like how and where you can reform it to make it uh, better, right? Yeah, I. I... To, totally, totally that, and like I think I I only agreed with one sign because like Blog To was like posting these like protest protester signs, and I was like, oh, they're all kind of ridiculous, except for one. And then uh, it was like the system's been here, the the system isn't broken; it's built this way, you know. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's that's the only true statement that I saw out of all of this. It's like it it's like like when you said like you need to reform the whole system. It's like, yeah, because the system's outdated. That's all, you know? It's mm-hmm. so like, that, yeah. that's, that's a good example. Like, public public jobs should be reformed as well. It's like, you know, mm-hmm. if, if you have like, yeah. A, yeah. Uh, yeah, I th- like, I think you're, uh, you're right. Like, it's, you really need to go into specific things. But I mean, I, I come from like the construction world and there's a lot of things that we have to deal with. Uh, with the government or in guidelines that we have to follow to meet. So it, I, I feel like the level that it is for, you know, building structures, it should be like that for yeah, like getting those kinds of jobs, like teaching jobs or um, yeah. like policing. There should be uh, huge levels of um, uh, like testing or uh, mm. uh, uh, whatever else that they, uh, programming, like, you know what I mean? Like to understand, like, uh, going through training, like it's before the cops. Totally. totally. Uh, and uh, and it's interesting that you say that because it's like, if you look at, like you would, you would assume that because these are publicly funded jobs and like these are public jobs, it, it should be like, um, super regulated and difficult to get into these things, you know, because they're so important. But like, yeah. even if, like, if I look at a police officer, I would assume, like, you have some combat training that's well above my own. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, but if you look at it, yeah, uh-huh. that's, that should be the case. And, I mean, there should be a certain level of to keep up with, too, because if you mm-hmm. see some cops, the way they, uh, I don't think they can, you know. Run? They've been on the job for a bit too long or sitting in the cars for a bit too long and not getting, like, proper training. of Totally. Um, and so their their reaction would be more uh, of uh, fearfulness, right? Yeah. Uh, for uh, being actually ready for doing whatever the situation may be. Right, right. So, uh, so it's like it's like if you like like th- this is what I mean. It's like we're with these publicly funded jobs. They're almost like looked down upon, but they're so essential, essential services basically, right? Yeah. But like, right. But like, they have no martial training. They have no psychology training. It's like. It's almost like anybody could be a police officer. You know, like you hear those people like, oh, I took police foundations in like mm-hmm. college. And you're like, you would think it's like an important program, but then you find out that it's just really easy to do. So a lot of people do it, you know? 
Yeah, no, no. I, I think like getting into it is is another step. But mm-hmm. once you're in it, there isn't like a continuous um, keep, uh, keep up with it. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, totally. Another thing, like you have to have a certain level of fitness and stuff when you join in. Mm-hmm. But after you join in, it, I don't believe there no, no, is but- anything. Totally, totally, totally. But but what I'm saying yeah. is like like yeah. aside from fitness, right? Like like to do. I think no, no, no. Yeah, it, uh-huh. right, right. I, I, exactly. I'm saying like like I'm adding that like that would be part of the reform with with mental education. Right. And, totally. 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 And, and things would, should be there, but it should be not just like a one time thing. It's a continuous thing. Yeah. Because. And uh, if. Mm-hmm. But but if you're if you're relying so heavily on a service, you think you would think that these things need to be super, um, super like upper echelon. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. like, if anybody can do a two year college course on like what it takes to be a police officer, it's like, so then you're only just netting the like the lower barrel. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's. Like, like for, for example, people want to defund the police, right? And it's like, so then you're only going to get people that can get that job. Like, they have to make it easy to get in because the, the pay would be so low, you know? But, like, you're, you're doing something that requires a high level of skill, but you're treating them like garbage men. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like it, it, if you defund them, so like no, everyone's gonna go for like a business job or like a, like a technology job because like I want all the money. So who's left to, like, which of the best among us are going to be the ones that go into the police force, except for the people that just can't hack it other any other well anywhere else, you know? You're creating yeah, that separation. But, but also, I don't know. It it, it that is it is. Um... It is a good way to look at, but I like the other kind of questions I uh, like. I thought of like maybe uh, it, with people with higher education wouldn't go into these jobs. Would not or would? Would not go into. That's what I'm why saying. Would they want to be police. Ex- why exactly. Want- That's why I think like it should be an upper echelon. It should be like held in high regard, you know. But but we don't hold it in high regard, you know. Yeah, yeah, but. But realistically, I, I don't know. It, it's it's a tricky situation. I, I, I think that if we do like do it like that with higher uh, upper echelon kind of thinking, like like education and things like that, like training, whatever that need to do. But it's like I I don't know who would want to join. Like you would just yeah. go to other kind of jobs that would be more safe for you. Versus totally. Just, right. Oh, oh, uh, oh, you mean like if the barrier to entry was a lot higher? Like you yeah, need to, yeah, but I think it would be co- compensatory with like how much you get paid, you know. Like it should be an upper echelon job. Yeah, but then if that's the case, like then you would just go to like other jobs that you don't have to risk your life in. I guess, or maybe it should be like a calling. You know, certain people are very called towards like, I yes. want to be an uh, like a police officer. You know, I want to like help yeah. people. Yeah, exactly. You will get those people, but I don't know. But you won't like get enough to police an entire giant city, and that's why they have to just scoop up everyone. Yeah. So the only other, I would say, the only other way would be to to have continuous training throughout. Mm, true. I see what your point is now. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. It's a, yeah. It's a very tricky. Like, there's so many things involved. Like, I mean, we don't really like we're talking about it, but we don't know the full aspect of it, right? Yeah. Totally. But, like, totally. The, the the only thing that like it yeah. kind of like irks me with the whole like defund or like abolish the police force thing then you're kind of mm-hmm. like doing like who has the bigger stick you know so it's like all right sure let's do that okay i know how to use stick fighting right so it's like mm-hmm. i'm just going to take your stuff and then if you want it back well you have to fight me for it right you know what i mean like no no don't call the police because you want it mm-hmm. abolished you know so it's yeah. like it it just makes no sense to me it's like then that we're just getting into gang mentality and then if that's the case then it's like the people with the bigger gang wins because because what are you going to do if there's no police force you're going to build a gang you're going to be like okay i know this dude that knows how to do this like how, how to fight so then if anything happens i gotta call that dude who knows how to fight that's yeah. like that's how gangs work yeah it's it's a it, it also sounds very much like us versus them when it should us is everyone right and we have to think about it like together versus uh, yeah, separately. Let's, let's, let's work together and figure out a solution. I was thinking about this too. It's like there's this like uh, adage in business, 
we learned it a long time ago, but I feel like a lot of people just overlooked it. But it's like um, a problem is only a problem if you have a proposed solution. If you don't have one, you're just complaining. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, oh, this should be changed. Okay, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. Okay, so you're really just wasting my time by getting this off your chest. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, you know, a lot, a lot, sometimes all you can do is complain. People don't have the full knowledge of what it really takes to get things totally. so, done. So it's like, so like you want all, you want the cake and you want to eat it too. So it's like yeah. you, you want reform without, without doing the hard work of trying to figure out how to get reform, you know? Like mm-hmm. all, all these people that like change things, the real game changers, they did it within the system, you know? Yeah. But like, but just like shouting about it without fully understanding the issue or even having a proposed solution that might work, it's like, what are you doing then? You know? Right. It's just how I feel. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, from their perspective, they're fed up with the situation, right? Uh, they feel like they don't have any power. So why don't you just why don't you just join it and then change it? You know what I mean? That's it's easy. like it's right? easy to say easy to say no, no, but that's um, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. It's like it's easy yeah. to say because nobody actually wants to do it. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like it's mm-hmm. like you're like, oh, it's easy. It's easy to say just join the system and then change it, but it's a lot of work. It's like yeah, exactly. That's that's the hurdle. So do you want? It is do, a lot. Uh, does exactly, it matter that yeah. much to you? Right. right now, right. Evidently, it are doesn't. you willing? Yeah, are you willing to go through the sacrifices to make those changes happen? Yeah, totally, totally. So let's not let's not jump the gun and just destroy something. Let's just figure out how to make it better within what we've already got, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, and there's so I, many other things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just, just there's so many other things that like that fall into this category. Like, I feel like anybody that's like, like right, protesting is important, you know, because you need to have your voice heard. But like, there's this protesting. And then there's just like, like complaining. I added like I guess it would be very <laughs> similar, but you know what I'm saying? It's like you you're you're like a child who's like, right. I'm angry. Why are you angry? I don't know why I'm angry. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, I, mm-hmm. Yeah, it feels it feels weird to me. Well, well, what I feel is it's more like. Um... I, it's another another thing that should wait, be spread. Wait, wait, wait. So, so then, so then somebody will be like, somebody will be like, oh well, then we're just exercising our power. Oh, you are? Did you vote? No, no, voting's not real, bro. That's exactly what like, I was. That's what I was going to next was like. Oh, okay, okay. It, that's exactly what I was going to say. It was like, well, with all this being said, you the way to exercise or the change is you have to vote. You have to vote for the candidates that you believe would do uh wh- what you require what you are um asking for right yeah totally totally yeah and if you don't vote then uh no there won't be any changes and so it, what's weird too is none of these people are even volunteering on political things like it's like if you really want that change why don't you join like a political like candidacy and then volunteer as one of their supporters and then like hopefully you know, push your ideas. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, if you really care about See, the issue, the, okay, so, just join yeah, in. So, yeah. So the issue, so when you said that, like, I, I think the issue here is people don't know how the system works Yeah. or how to change the thing. Like people really should educate themselves on like, what, what can we do to really actually uh, in, instigate change? And, and, and that is the voting that is ed- being educated on um, uh, the politicians that you're voting for. Mm-hmm. Totally, um, totally. So I, I think that's – people really – they have to understand, like, how it works in order to create the change to happen. T- like, totally, you know, to- totally, totally, totally. So, like, um, it's, it's, it's reminding me – so I, I wrote this I wrote this article. I haven't fully published it yet, but it's, like, it's about ROI. So, like, ROI is return on your investment. And yeah. essentially the basic premise is whatever you put in, you should at least get more out, right? Mm-hmm. You, yeah. Like, breaking even is, like – not that great, but at least you broke even, meaning like you you spent just as much as you earned. But the idea yeah. is you want to gain back more 
than what you're putting in, right? Yeah. But like people don't realize that investment is more than money. It's like time and energy, right? Mm-hmm. So like, so like, <laughs> I I've been having these like marketing debates with people. Like they'll be like, oh. Uh, a b test this program and like send it to this these people but not these people but like every time you ask me to do something it makes it more difficult to execute right so what's the return on my effort put in like it are you going to like have you given enough forethought into how all of this works that we're expecting a greater output than the effort we're putting in Right. You know what I'm saying? But that requires you to understand how a system operates. But they don't know. They're just saying things and they're just putting more obstacles and variables in the way rather than like understanding what is necessary and what's not and then like efficiently going towards the solution. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's how I feel about this whole issue right now. It's like you're 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 saying things but without the foresight of understanding what is going to happen if these things do come true? You know? Right. Yeah. And I feel like that's just generally how society society operates. Because it's like what I'm, what I'm seeing in the business world is exactly what I'm seeing in like this protesting world. And it's like we're just not educating ourselves on the full scope here. And we're just asking for things we don't know why we're asking for them. Yeah, we have to get the perspective, like the holistic perspective to understand what so, actually needs to be. So, so, right. like, so like your investment becomes like, okay, let's defund or abolish the police. Okay, your return is that there's more anarchy in the streets. That is a mm. bad ROI. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like, yeah. look at the ROI, bro. Like, what what is going to happen if you do this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah, we need the police, but we need to reform it in the areas that is broken. So that is, like, who you should be looking into electing, right? Like, you have to get, yeah, the whole idea. You have to understand how it all really works in order to know where and what you can do to change it. Totally, totally. And and one thing that is important to do in knowing how things work is look into the history of how things were built. Right. You know, it's like maybe you would have a better understanding of like maybe you'd have more tolerance if you understood where we came from and why we're here. You know, from both perspectives. Like people who are racist, it's like, okay, but do you from, realize that we all come from the same place? Right. You know, yeah. but also from the people that are like, oh, let's reform the system. It's like, yeah, but do you realize that this is a compounded system? Like, mm-hmm. like there was no, there's no conspiracy built underlying it all. No. Yeah. Like, like they weren't like, let's just set out to be racist. It's just like, at the time when this was built, we so happened to be racist. And then from mm-hmm. there, everything else got built out. And like the remaining actions that continued past that, like just perpetuated the, the racist behavior. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like, and like, also, if you look at who's here the longest, you know, when you talk about old money, and then you're like, oh, it's usually white people with old money, you know, but it's like, yeah, because they've been in the country the longest, you know, mm-hmm. they've perpetuated generations of wealth, right? Whereas, like, for example, you and I, our parents are from a third world country or like a different country, and like, yeah now they're here so like their first shot at old money is us right you know what i'm saying so it's like yeah yeah if you understand it from that perspective it's like can you really hate the system is just how it was built it's just how it how it unraveled over time not built it's just how it unraveled yeah unraveled i think is yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's weird weird times <sighs> and then and then it's even weirder because like the COVID stuff is giving people more free time to like complain or think about what they want to complain about, you know, but they all, yeah, they have nothing else to do other than complain. Yeah. With the time, <laughs> no job. Yeah. No. It's was, it was funny. I was at Long McQuaid and this musical store and then 
uh, there was a guy in there and he's like, oh yeah, I lost my job because of COVID. So I'm looking to buy a base and an amp so I can start getting into it. And I was like, oh, that's so funny. Like people mm-hmm. really just have so much free time. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's nothing else to do. So yeah. Yeah. We have to find a ways, we have to find ways to occupy our time, right? Yeah, totally, totally. So, all right, let, let's get into this whole, like, uh, Gandhi thing right now, because mm. cause I think this one's also weird as well. Because, like, I feel like if you judge, if you judge someone or something from the contemporary time frame that you're judging it in, like, you're, you're judging now, you're, you're judging the yeah. past by today's standards, Right. And I think if you always do that, you're always going to be catching up and nothing will be correct, you know, because like there's a whole thing right now about like Gandhi being like a misogynist and like a, a racist himself. And it's like, yeah, but without Gandhi, you wouldn't have Martin Luther King, you know. So it's like yeah. understanding the chain of events is mm-hmm. important and not demonizing a past thing. Because, cause like, it almost feels like they just Googled Gandhi and they're like, okay, I'll look at all the bad <laughs> things he did. You know what I mean? But, like, but that's as far as you Googled. But if you Google further back than that, like, a lot of craziness was going on back in the day, you know, that we still yeah. use in yeah. this time. Like, like, you and I were having that discussion about, like, how uh, Plato was a um, homosexual pedophile, you know. Mm-hmm. But Plato created academia he created the first school so without plato there'd be no schools you know Mm -hmm. like formalized university style institutions you know so it's like so should we abolish all universities now because they were founded on the idea that plato started and plato is a homosexual pedophile right yeah (laughs) like i don't know you know abolish abolish schools (laughs) right like it makes no sense Mm mm-hmm and I feel like if you look into anything, you'll find negativity in everything. But people, yeah. So the other thing is, like, yes. But then it could be like, was it their stance when they passed away? Like, did they, like, I, we could have bad pass, right? We, mm, we were, using, you're saying, yeah. We were, you, we were using words at the time when we were young. We didn't know what they really meant, right? True, we yeah, don't totally. use terms anymore today because that's not, it's not uh, a good thing to do, right? <laughs> so, yeah. And we learn from 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 our mistakes and we grow. So, I like by doing that, like like with Gandhi and stuff. Looking back, but was that his stance at the end of his life? Like, did true, he, like, true, 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 true. What when when did you take that slice? You know, it, it's sort of like, exactly. well, but yeah. but it's sort of like what they do in the media now with everyone. They'll demonize somebody. So like somebody will we'll say a clip, right? If if I if I go like this, like for for example, I'm gonna go. All right, this is an example of what somebody's about to say, and then I say something super racist, and they just cut out the part where I said this is an example of something somebody was gonna say. Yeah, and they just exactly. put that racist part. It's like, yeah, cuts are super important, you know. Yeah, yeah. Where you and, and, cut and, a thing mm-hmm. can shift. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it can shift that perspective on that person. And and this is the idea. This is my problem with this idea of cancel culture because just because someone said it in the past, like this happened to Kevin Hart, right? Like right, with the Oscar, right. well, was there was a whole cancel culture against him, but he had said it. He had already apologized for what he had said, but right. they had pa- ignored the apology. Like he all, he said the apology even bef- like before, uh, but it, when it resurfaced again, right? Mm-hmm. So. But you were just like he. That's not his perspective anymore. Uh, people change, and and I, I this idea of can I have a problem with this idea of cancel culture. <laughs> totally, totally, yeah, yeah. And right, and, people need to, people. There needs to be a time where people can learn from their mistakes. To- and, totally, yeah. And and it's like it's like you're not affording that to someone else, mm-hmm. whereas yeah. you're you'll afford it to yourself. You know what I mean? Like. If, if you make a mistake, you're like, oh, man, that was my mistake, right? But then if somebody else makes a mistake, it's like, no, demonize them forever, you know? Yeah. Especially in the celebrity yeah. world. Um, it's funny, though, because, like, uh, T.I., I was listening to his podcast, so good. And he was saying he was saying that um, social media 
is the only place where I have to actively go for um, combative energy. You know, like <laughs> so, so like so like like in his normal life, it's like oh everything's cool, but he has to actually pull out his phone, go yeah. to the post, scroll down to the negative comments to be like oh wow they really <laughs> hate me. But it's like just ignore them, you know. But I, I get it though, because like even from my perspective, like it's kind of annoying, like. I it still aggravates me when I see something and somebody comments on it. It's like, dude, I got a comment back. Like, you know, like you just it's right. Yeah. You can't just yeah. ignore it because ignoring it also feeds the other people. Like you're trying to stomp out the fire quick, you know? Yeah. But if you ignore yeah. it, then like other people will comment on that person's post and then it'll start this crazy fire, you know? Mm-hmm. I think it depends on like, yeah, the, how, like how big you are, right? Because – you can't comment on everyone. Totally, just... totally. But but uh, speaking of learn yeah. from your mistakes, so Idris Alba, he he made this T-shirt that said like, "You can take my music, uh, my style, my fashion, and then like mm-hmm. just not my life kind of thing." Right. And then he was like doing that as like a Black Lives Matter kind of T-shirt, and then mm-hmm. and then he got so much hate for it that he deleted it, and then he reposted a picture of like a T-shirt and said deleted, and then in the caption he's like, "When your when your people don't feel what you're feeling or something like that," and then like I was reading yeah. the comments and I was like, "Yeah, that was a bad mistake on the shirt." I'm like, "Okay, one, he's still learning. Totally cool. Like people learn all the time, but two, it's like yeah. it's like he probably thought that was a gnarly shirt, you know." And then, again, you have to go find that negativity. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you would have scrolled yeah. to be like, oh, let me delete this. And, like, let me post post this other thing up, you know? Right. No, but like, I, 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 yeah, exactly. But in, even in Idris Elba, like, I, I think I understood what his message was, right? Yeah, that life I got it too, yeah. Or, yeah. yeah, that's what he's saying. And I don't understand. But I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then that's yeah. gonna bite him. That's gonna bite him in the ass one day, you know. So he's gonna, he's gonna get super famous, and then like he's already super famous, but like something's gonna happen. Like he's gonna like host the Oscars, and then somebody's gonna bring that up. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. oh, right. that's crazy. Like, I feel like, I feel like with social media, we we look too much. We we feel like we know the person more than we do, you know. Yes, and it's like, dude, you don't know me. You you get things that I'm putting out, but like on a personal level, you don't know me. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like I feel like that's why people feel like they can comment and say things or like share things back because it's like, but I do know you. You know, I've read everything you've done, and it's like, it's like, mm-hmm. but yeah. even those are excerpts from my life. You don't actually know me like a friend. We're not cool like that. You know. Yeah, I don't know why, especially with celebrity culture, that that's what happens. Like, we think we know who they are uh, based on the characters they play on movies. Totally, whatnot. totally. But 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 not even like in celebrity ishness, mm-hmm. right? Remember when like MSN, like we're gonna throw back to MSN. Remember when, like MSN those days, and then like yeah. they'd, like message other people from class, like especially like. I remember like when when I was like you know feeling a girl and then you like you message them and then you're like oh I know them but it's like no you literally only like looking back now it's like I'm stupid but <laughs> you only know them through the text that they're writing on the screen you know what I mean right. like you yeah. don't actually know the person but you feel so connected you know <laughs> right, right you know what I'm right, saying yeah. it's like yeah it's weird yeah even that even within our own lives yeah you're right yeah that's very much true yeah. but you it, don't really yeah it's like it's i know you from the from like the 7 p.m to the 8 p.m that you log in and then we have a little conversation like oh you know mrs mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. mrs montgomery's class was a little weird today what'd you put on this assignment oh god i know you now you know what i mean like <laughs> dude not really you know right right yeah uh, yeah i think that's a big that's a big illusion that we create with social, but it's like also social media is great because it creates connectivity, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's again, it's not it's not all negative. It's there are very much positives with it. Yeah, it depends on uh, who you follow, what you follow, what you want to follow, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's another thing too. It's like echo chambers, right? It's like 
you are going to follow things that you like. So you're going to continue to think that you're correct because those are the things you... Uh, so a, a good example, <laughs> this is kind of like... Um, it's like a uh, controversial point I would bring up, but like, so I I write for this studio. It's like not studio. It's like an online yoga magazine, and they were like asking like, does anybody know any like? They put it on their post like, does anybody can anybody recommend like any really good anti racist podcasts or whatever, whatever, right? And I'm, the mm-hmm. first thing I thought was like, like why don't you look at what the other th- other side's saying as well, you know, like. Like just as much as you're you're learning how to be anti-racist, like what? Why do they feel they need this idea? Because then you're just gonna like, then everyone's gonna be sharing the exact same books. You know what I mean? Then it's another echo chamber. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like it should be. Yeah, you should be showing both. And 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 with that, you'll have more of a foundation of why something's messed up. You know. Right. If, if you're like. Yeah. Like if, mm-hmm. if um, there was this TED talk with this guy, I didn't, I didn't fully watch it, but it came up in my feed. Like this, um, this black dude, he was spending a lot of time with white supremacists, you know, and he was saying like he was, in his TED talk, he was explaining why he did that. And like, it's because, you know, like, like that movie that you suggested, right? It's like, you got to like live with them, figure out the idea and you could see where you guys get along or don't get along. And then maybe we could work through it, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I I don't I don't like to fault anyone because I think it's like that's just how you were brought up, you know, it's like a I don't know your life events, you know. Yeah, that yes, yeah. Yeah. But to, but to presume that you do is just as negative as like you being racist, you know. Mhm. Yeah. 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 <sighs> interesting times yeah totally right and and i think i think also another thing um is that in this whole pursuit of inclusivity we're creating separation you know like oh you're you're not inclusive we can't include include you in the inclusive group <laughs> you know what i'm saying right, like, that, makes, that makes no sense like like you want inclusivity but you want inclusivity with people that echo your ideas so it's not real inclusivity. It's just more separation masked yeah. as inclusivity. You right. Know? It's, I, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah I, I think you should allow people who are different uh, views from you to join in. Like in, Then only you all grow together and learn from each other, right? So that's by, you know, by kicking someone out, then you're, you're allowing him to continuously not understand you. Yeah, totally, totally. Totally. And, and all right, I'm not, I'm not a huge believer, like in the Bible, I'm sure it's like stories that got passed down to like pass on good messages, but like, I'm going to give you a Bible example, but Jesus spent all of his time with like prostitutes, sinners, gamblers, thieves, you Mm -hmm. know, like all these people, like these lowest of the low. And then he like reformed them. He was like, Hey man, you don't need to be doing that. You know, which is great. I think that's a great example. It's like, you should follow Jesus's lead. I don't want to sound like super Christian here, but like, but like if you believe in that kind of thing and he's an example of who you should strive to be towards, Jesus was the ultimate inclusivity person. Why? Because he wanted to get to know you, you know, he wasn't like only inclusive people get to be around me. He was like, I mean, you don't agree. Why don't we agree? Let's see if we can find some common ground. Right. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Whether that's a real story or not, I'm just saying, like, as a parable, as an example of like what we should work towards, it's like, like, don't, you know, don't demonize. To 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 be no. to be truly inclusive is to not demonize. Yeah. 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 I think that's. I agree, totally agree with that. Yeah, we should work together in a way yeah. we learn from each other and we should not be creating a new type of segregation totally totally you know what you know it's funny to me actually as well uh, when people talk about inclusivity and i find out they're religious because mm-hmm. i'm like <laughs> but if you're religious that means your god versus my god how is that inclusive and also did you look into the fact that like the christian crusades were all about like abolishing all deities aside from christ right you know what i mean like 
Like if, we're, if we're talking about systemic racism, that's where it began. You know, they they <laughs> wanted to push their. Oh, what was the thing you told me about? Like, um, give, give a quick breakdown on the history of why we came to North America. Well, it was out of um, resources. We ran out. Like they ran out of resources in Europe, whatever they were doing at the time, and they needed to uh, go outside of Europe. The reason they couldn't go. Uh, within Europe, like, you know, for instance, like UK into France or like, um, uh, 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 like, uh, what's the word? Um, Trees? like take over. Yeah. And they're like, like, you know, you can't just, um, invade other countries at the time because they've already like signed treaties between mm-hmm. like out of, cause they've already had years of those wars within those countries that eventually out of that came up treaties and things like that, or borders. And you can't really, uh, when you're all agreeing on each other uh, about those sort of things, then, well, all they could do was go outside of Europe. Totally, totally. Okay, and, and what is the quickest way to conquer land? Through physical force, which is like yeah. your army, or through ideas, which is the missionaries, right? You're going to spread. Yes. Like when they came to North America and they saw the natives, they were like, okay, one, we're going to kill you. We're going to push you out because we need your resources. And then the people that we decide can stay have to let go of their gods and absorb our god. Because mm-hmm. if you do that, we can indoctrinate you into why we're correct. We're doing the Lord's work. Yeah. Right? So it's like – and then if you look at it from there, that's essentially where North America began. So if you're telling me that you want to be inclusive but you subscribe to an ancient doctrine – like it, it's it weird. It's like you're gonna go against Gandhi, but you're not gonna go against your own religion, right? right? <laughs> it's like I'm I'm Catholic, but I want to tear down this Gandhi statue. Did you know that the Catholics had the Christian Crusades? So it's like, mm-hmm. well, you, you have way more bloodshed than Gandhi because Gandhi preached nonviolence, right? Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like it's like where do we draw the line? Yeah, but but I need God. Okay, so you're going to keep this idea. You're you're gonna like bastardize, uh, like a legend, Gandhi, in favor of you needing a Christ-like figure. So you're gonna overlook the negativity that your entire religion put out into the world because he makes you feel safe. See what I'm saying? It's like. Mm-hmm. It, it's, yeah. it's like you want to believe in Santa Claus because he brings you gifts. So you're going to ignore the fact that it's just your parents putting presents under the tree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, religion is one thing. I didn't, I don't, <laughs> I didn't think we we're going to go into that, but yeah. <laughs> no, but I think, I think that's like, that's the biggest media outlet, you know, because before we had mass, mass news, you had mass. Right, you'd go there, and then the, the literally the priest would tell you what to do. He'd yeah, be like, yeah, you right. know, we we need to band together to like build this church, you know. Right. Yeah. And if you want to look at yes, yeah, where did this that start? Yeah. And uh, you know, it's, you know, it's also ridiculous. So this literally happened to me, and I walked out of church, and my mom was like, "It was funny." She was like, "Oh, you think you're a hot shot walking out of church?" Blah blah. But I'm like. <laughs> Dude, this is so ridiculous. So, like, I was there, and the the priest that was, like, doing mass at that time, this was, like, 10, 12 years ago, something like that, and uh, he was going against gay marriage. Mm-hmm. But look at us now. We're, we're, like, gay marriage legal. People, like, we have Pride Month, you know? Yeah. So it's like, if you want to reform police structures, why not reform your belief system as well you know right right doesn't it just make sense it's like it's just picking and choosing you know yeah uh yeah (laughs) i i feel it's funny because like um the the time that we're in now is very much a mirror of the 60s you know, we had like flower power and like nobody wanted to go to war, all that mm-hmm. stuff. And then the conservatives were like, you know, we're one day you're going to be like us. These hippies don't understand. 
and the hippies, which were like the 20 year olds at the time, were like, no, love and peace. And then they became like 30, 40, started to get families. And they're like, oh, wait, what was I doing in my 60s? Like in the 60s, that made no sense, you know? Right. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess I guess that's what's happening now. So they will grow out of it, I guess, and understand what is what's in the real reality of it all. Yeah, we... <laughs> yeah totally. And, th- and that's not to say like because it's like oh maybe you guys are just conservative, but like I spent almost well, it's been like a decade now, but like a decade like in that zone of like love and peace and prosperity only to realize like oh you're just as confused as the other side you know Mm -hmm. it's all about a balance you know people people in that like yoga world want to like do away with money but it's like but how are you paying for your rent for the yoga studio makes no sense right like you know what i'm saying like i don't know it's like it's like what we were going at with like not well maybe mm -hmm. they're they're not uh, yeah, but it's like, but even uh, for whoever was thinking of making the yoga studio, they were talking, they were thinking about money, though. That's like, what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It, yeah. It's 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 the people who, like, they, they take it for granted, you know? Like, they think this yoga studio has been here forever. But it's like, no, like, that yoga studio person is looking at their bottom line. They don't want to run in the negative, mm-hmm. you know? But yeah. but the yoga teacher is all about like no do away with capitalism and it's like how can you say that like what hypocrisy to say like do away with capitalism inside a capitalistic venture you know like yeah yeah that is pure hip- hypocrisy yeah yeah and and that's that's one of the reasons why like um, it's important to absorb both sides you know or to really to really realize what's going on you know mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, weird times. So what what can you do, Vish? What can you do? Yeah. What 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 can you well I guess you can't really abolish, but like how do you fix the situation? Like do you do you think tearing it down's even like possible? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think you can right. tear something down that's already been here for years. Uh, like, like you would essentially, you're asking to like abolish the entire country. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Even like the start of the country was not in a was not in a good way, right? It was it was it was taken over. It was a lot of people lost their lives. Their native Indians lost lost their lives and stuff. But that's we, 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 this is where we are now, and we have to uh, uh, learn from those mistakes, but uh, uh, grow from it and change it. What we can do now, whatever we can do now, right? So, upgrades. the police force upgrades. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or reform things, or where we need to do create those changes need to be done. But like, I don't think we can necessarily start from scratch. It's just we've been in it too long. We yeah, can totally. Only- totally. I, I think yeah. I think we just need an upgrade to our operating system. We're not asking to build an entire iOS. You're just looking, right, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we already have an iOS. Like it's working. That's not the foundations in- have been here for so long. What we can do is change the you know trajectory the of where it's all headed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, weird time, weird time, and I think I'm. Actually, you know what? Like, for, 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 from my perspective, because I was like, so, okay. So, like, if you look into, like, Taoism and stuff, right? Like, the, the sages, right? The, the truly, mm-hmm. a sage is a wise person. It's all it means. So, the wise people of the olden times, what they did was they realized how crazy society was, and that's why they lived in the mountains. I'm not saying to go live in the mountains, but what I'm saying is, like, all you can really do is just watch the tide flow one way or the next you know right like like from my perspective it's like regardless of what i think 
it's just going to ebb and flow in its own herd mentality way. I think what this is really showing me is like what a herd, what a pack animal humans are. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like rather than like educating yourself to what, what's important, you're just going to look at the loudest voice. And if you're considering it from that lens, then you're no better than pack animals. You're going to follow the alpha male, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Humans, humans essentially are animals. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> you no, know, but, right. But it's like we like to, like, raise ourselves above animalistic tendencies. Right. But, but we don't realize that it's, like, in your pursuit... Well, we... Yeah. Well, we can't. It that's just impossible. Because you are an animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. What was that yeah. thing you said? Like, remember before? It's like we were talking about like, oh, how unnatural the world, like cities are. But it's like, no, but they are natural. You you look at a beehive. Is a beehive mm -hmm. unnatural? You know. Right. It's their own city. So. Yeah. Exactly. Like for us, like metal, we just learned how to harness metal. It's not unnatural. We didn't take anything that's not from this planet and then use it. It's yeah. all part of nature. It's yeah. within the nature of this world. Yeah. So, like, this bickering that we see that's going on, like, that's just a natural part of, like, we had it in the 60s. We had it, I'm sure, well before then. We'll have it again in the future. This is just our reform period, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's weird, though, because I was thinking, like, at the beginning of all this, I was like, oh, there is the potential for world peace, right? Because the enemy of my enemy is my friend. We're all going to fight against COVID and we're going to band together. And that really just lasted like two weeks, you know? <laughs> and, then, and then all of a sudden we started like thinking about what else can I, you know, bring up during this period, you know? It, then, yeah, it was, it was just boiling up. It was just something like this. Once it happened, because everyone's at home, nothing else to do other than protest. <laughs> yeah yeah but but but, but again that's not to say it, that that's not yeah to, no, it's not it's not it, yeah it's not to say it's not deserved it is yeah it is something deserved but it's there it needs to be some level to it I, it, it it needs to um have some objectivity yeah it's like yeah. it, it feels very like meandering and aimless. Well, no, no, there's a name, there's a name, but it, it's it seems to be more run on emotion than on facts, right? But yeah. again, if you look at like the objective in me is saying like look at it from a herd mentality perspective, and it's like it makes complete sense why it's doing this, mm -hmm. you know, because like we are animals, like pack animals. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. All right. Good pod a good podcast, Fish. Yeah. Any final thoughts? No, I mean, yeah, just educators. Educate yourself. <laughs> I was, I was going to say the exact same thing. Yeah. Education breeds understanding. And then from understanding, you'd better able to make decisions and actions. Yeah. Yeah. But again, nobody wants to do the work. We're just going to pack animal it out. Wait, we're saying what now? All right, let's go in that direction. Oh, they're saying what now? All right, let's go in that direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, till next time, pick up some teas and or accessories, zenrealclothingco.com, or check out the free Zenreal Radio use offer code SGPodcast at checkout for 20% off select items. And uh, hashtag stay woke. That's what's up. Do some reading. <laughs> Take it easy, Peace. Peace. Bye.